Mode. And in 1993, Depeche Mode was going to release Songs of Faith and Devotion. It was their follow-up to Violator, which at the time, I mean, they were one of the biggest bands in the world. They still are. And the funny thing is, is in those days, trying to acquire music was a much more time-consuming process. You, if you really liked the band, you had to have a, like a subscription to Rolling Stone, or like me, I had just gotten my, my uh, driver's license. So I spent a lot of time uh, going to uh, Coconuts or all those uh, Red Tower records. You had to you know, go to the different record stores uh, around town and, and see what kind of publications they had. So that way you can look up articles or look up, uh, you know, just look up information about the CD. And I remember I was trying to just get, yes, I was such a big fan. So I was like, oh, what's, what are they going to do? He's got tattoos now. They're going grunge too. You know, it was really exciting. And of course, when the CD came out, you got in the car and you drove 10 minutes away and you picked up the CD, brought it home because I had a tape player in the car. So I had to, you know, un unwrap it and, and put it in. And of course, now, 20 years later, if you wanted to pick up their latest CD, Delta Machine, well, that's just it. It's not even a CD anymore. You just, you've already downloaded it on iTunes and could be listening to that instead of this boring story. I mean, that's, and it's, we know this, we, we know this is how it is now. We know how fast the internet is. But when you really think about all the time it took to acquire information, to acquire art, to, you know, you had to have a driver's license. It wasn't, it wasn't broadcast to your home uh, instantaneously when you wanted it. You know, you can go from something that took hours now only takes minutes and even seconds. And I think we are just now starting to realize just how much life has changed, just how much of a radical change that is.